Good morning, Impact Athletes. It's a wonderful Saturday morning here for our recovery class. Um, Coach Scott coming to you uh, on one of the uh, setups. She's getting big, isn't she? Coach Leia in the house. She will not be helping out. Uh, she has to chew on things still, so including my toes. Anyway, she loves this run, by the way. So anyway, um, she's going to get escorted out by Coach Autumn. There you go. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> anyway, coming to you live from uh, our house today. Um, a brief departure in, in what we've done. We're going to do a couple of things. We're going to start with breathing here. Um, but our focus and our intention today is about open and closed chain uh, kinetic exercises. Um, and what we're looking at, um, turn that off so I don't have a buzz in the background. When we talk open kinetic chain exercises, um, it's about the segment that, uh, whether it's a hand or your foot, that's farthest uh, away from the body. Um, and it's free. It's not attached to a permanent object. Um, in a closed chain exercise, uh, it's fixed or it's stationary. So we're going to do both today um, in hopes to give you, a, you know, at least a, a great education in regards to what you can do, not only in a recovery format like today, but you can also do pre-workout, which is absolutely important, or also to do post-workout, which is just as important. Um, revving up the engine. If, you, if you're an Indy car, if you're any type of race car, you're not going to go from the hauler straight to the racetrack. You're going to get warmed up and then you're also going to cool down. So that's really important to understand. Um, you know, think about another, another example on the open and closed is uh, a squat for, the, uh, for an example. So when I get into a squat, uh, the foot presses against the floor and it needed to raise the body. And so that is an example of a closed kinetic chain movement. Now, if you think that uh, now to, to show the open chain, think of a leg curl machine um, to where you're sitting and you're raising that leg. That's an open chain mobility exercise. So, um, you know, we're going to be exploring both of these today. We're going to start with open and we're going to end with closed. Um, and you'll always find these uh, type movements in any type of, of workout, uh, not even necessarily workout, but pre-workout, um, just to get the body greased up and ready to go. Um, turn this down just a slight bit. But we're going to start with breathing today. Um, just to get ourselves centered. So we're going to do five second breaths. We're going to do this for five minutes. We're just going to cleanse our minds. We may have been only up for 15 minutes or an hour and a half. We may have already gotten some work done um, or some workout done. Um, but we may already be amped up. So let's bring it back down. And let's just find a good centering position and let's breathe. Inhale. And exhale. And do this for five minutes. Inhale. I do nostril breathing this morning. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose. Shoulders are down. We're out of our turtle shell.
completed our first minute of breathing, time really doesn't matter. Just to make sure that we are on track in regards to our flows today. As we breathe in, as we breathe out, doing belly breathing. So think of the J breath. Lifting up, expanding the ribcage to full capacity, exhaling, and then back out through the belly. And through the belly, up through the diaphragm. Back out, it looks like a J from the side. the shoulders, stay out of the turtle shell, stand, stall, talk, excuse me, straight posture, sitting tall, our meditation at the end of today is talking about patience, I think over the past four weeks, we have just about, what, two more weeks, where we're allowed to get back, hopefully, fingers crossed, get back into the studio. We've had to endure quite a bit of patience. We want to do so much during our daily schedule, whether we're working, whether we're not working. All about patience. Okay, two more cycles. Here we go. Inhale. So let's start with open chain mobility this morning. So one of the tests that we do, I'm going to stand here so I'm in frame. One of the tests that we do uh, our assessments at Impact are hip tucks. Hip health is absolutely incredible and essential. So we stay, we all have lower back issues. Um, these hips take care of them. Um, we got to be able to, to move these uh, hips uh, they, as we're sitting, we're in flexion, so we get a lot of tightness here. What we're going to do, we're going to do hip tucks. I'm going to turn to the side, so we're going to think ribs are down, we're going to stand in neutral. All we're going to do is we're going to inhale, and the butt's going to go back. Let's see, I have been lower back extension and then as we exhale pulling the ribs under getting the ribs low and then let's 
go back. We're going to do 10 both ways. If you're having problems being able to go from extension and tucking the hips under, glutes are firing, glutes could be a little sleepy. Got to get the glutes activated. Everything stays very still. All we're doing is looking to move the hips. Now moving into that lower back tension, in something like this with our hip tucks, it's okay. We have no load coming over us. We're not deadlifting. We have no back squat, we have no front squat, no weight on our shoulders or in the front position. So it's pretty safe. Last week we did these on the ground. This week we can do them in a vertical open chain format. From here, let's do lateral hip roots. So, what you're going to do, you're going to move in an angle. So, I'm, I'm facing you. So, our sagittal plane is coming right through me, out, out my backside. We're going to move upper body at a 45 degree angle, and we're going to move the lower body at a uh, 45, 45 degree angle back. And so, how this is going to look, we're going to get the hips back. And we're going to extend it forward. So we're going to go the other way. Really sitting into this hip. Trying to keep the shoulders down. Good posture. There's three. Open chain mobility right now. see all these motions slow and control I'm not going anywhere I'm not trying to rush through these push that hip back to a 45 reach out nice straight back we're not hunched over. Let's go a couple more. Using our breath, inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, and exhaling. All right, a little fun one here, let's do hip circles. So, think of your hips you're going to draw a circle. So, from the front, the hips are coming forward, glutes are squeezed, then hips go um, to your right, my left. Hips get pushed to the back of the room, to the side. We're just going to do hip circles. We're going to do both Directions. Think about stirring the pot. Getting a little bit of stretching through the lower back, through the hips. I get a lot of stretching through our hip flexors, the quads, back to those hip tucks that we did at the beginning. And let's go the other way. 
really drive the hips forward. If we have problems in regards to pulling the hips underneath us and we're stuck in lower back extension, ways to go about that, one, we need to get the glutes activated. No way around that one. But we want to get the quads feeling a lot more stretched. We can do cow stretch. So the thing is, when we do our assessments at impact, there's always a test and retest. Testing to be able to see, okay, can we do this? Let's go into a couple exercises. So if we can't get under here, we'll do couch stretch. We'll do a variety of exercises to get these quads nice and long so we can start gaining access and bringing the hips under. All right. So spinal glides, be at the back of our mat, what we're going to do here, it might be out of frame just a little bit, okay, right here. So feet are hip width apart. We're going to try to rip the ground apart, activates the uh, abductors and part of the glutes as well. Think of hinging right here. So this is all we're going to do. Lower body stays incredibly uh, still. So we're going to reach in this frontal plane. Not zipping through this. Oh. Inhaling. Exhaling. So what we're trying to do is just being able to get our spine working independently of our hips. We don't often move in this frontal plane. We do a lot of exercises in this frontal plane, but we don't take the time to move. All right, let's go two more. Reach to the right. Reach to the left, reach to the right, and reach to the left. All right, let's get some lateral flexion. There again, open chain mobility for right now. What we're going to do, um, tuck. Left hand is going to be palm up. Right hand is going to be palm down. What we're going to do is you, we're, the hips are going to go with us. You're going to, as your right hip goes out, the left hand follows. This right hand, up a little out of frame, is going to go here. Nice, slow and control. These warm ups can be done in about 10 to 15 minutes. Even in this controlled type of environment. take any of my classes, you also know that sometimes counting is hard. I'll say seven reps or ten reps or breaths, and it's around there. It's a mere suggestion. Let's go one more. This one's called the gunslinger. Now, I want you to pay attention to this. This goes back to our hip tucks, our ability not only to tuck our hips, but we're going to get in some uh, nice upper back protraction, rounding of the shoulders, get some good scapular movement. We're going to have a little fun with this. So, um, we're going to get our pistols ready. 
we're going to pull the ribs down. Hips are, um, hips are in neutral. We're going to bring our hands together. Nice rounded structure. It's almost as if you have a beach ball right here. And the hips come underneath. Back into extension. Come slinger. Really extending through those fingers. Opening up a little scapular um, squeeze here, and then bringing back into the gun slinger. Tucking the hips under. Almost at our full sail. Big inhale, exhale, pull the ribs down, tuck the hips underneath. Looks a little silly, but boy, is this a good exercise. Let's do three more, including this one. Making sure the shoulders are down. I caught myself inside my turtle shell. And one more. Okay. Well, um, two more before we mo move into our closed chain mobility. Um, we do these quite often at impact, um, both in our, uh, uh, definitely in our workouts for both performance and mobility. So feet underneath, these are shoulder cars. A car is a controlled articulated rotation. So shoulders down, turn to the side, and comes out away from our body. Think about this movement right here. We're not, we're not adding any rotation. We're nice and solid. This is our this is our movement right here. We're gonna shake hands with the person, the wall, the painting right in front of you, keeping that shoulder down. We're gonna raise our arm now. This hand turn starts turning away from your body. Palm should be away from you. As you're rotating, keep rotating that palm. And then put it in your hip pocket. The back of the hand should be in your hip pocket. Let's reverse. There again, we're not getting here. Keeping that shoulder down. Palm is away from you. And then extending forward. Reverse the process. Shake hands. Arm is vertical. Rotate the palm away from you. Now we can do these also. I'll show you this variation because what we like to do, our body says, oh, we have all this rotation when it actually doesn't. But our torso likes to open up and do this. So what I'll show you real quick is another variation to this. This is right against the wall. I'm going to do it here to be able to show you a little bit better. Get my stick mobility out of the way. If you are having problems with rotating that chest open, put this right into the sternum. We're going to do the same thing. Now, by pushing into this foam roller, it keeps me from opening up because if I open up, that foam roller is going to fall. Let's do one more. System check. Shoulders down. Let's extend the handshake forward. Rotate up. Palm is 
Facing internal right now. Now starting to rotate away from me. Pointing away. Keeping rotation, rotation. Keep rotating it. And then the palm ends up in your hip pocket. Palm away. And let's reverse the process. And then let's hit the other side. Left shoulder or right shoulder, whichever one. Here we go. Shoulders down. Extend the handshake forward. Remember, we have this motion here. Palms coming up. I tell you what, so I can stay in frame, especially on YouTube. I'm going to go to a tall kneel and finish these out. Still open chain. I want you to be able to see my hands. So I'm in tall chain. Toes are down. Down. Extend the handshake forward, up, rotating away. Now, the big one of the other big problems we have during this rotation is that we like to get up to here. Keep the shoulder down. Shoulder down and in this pocket, getting true rotation within that shoulder joint, that GH joint. Pulling up humeral, GH for short. Controlling the breath the entire time. Let's do two more. All right. The impact is stepping up and over the gate. So um, we also had a workout on Wednesday to where we did a Tabata of, of high knees um, where we closed our eyes. It's a whole different thing and topic of proprioception. What we're going to do here is we're going to do hip cars. Bring your hips up to a high knee. We're going to open up our hips. Touch and then we're going to close the door. So you have an object right here. I could potentially put this here. This is going to challenge me that I'm going to come up. I'm going to come over. Control. Work through this down foot. Toe and arch. That toe is rooted into the ground. You're squeezing the ground with the heel, creating a wonderful arch structure there. Nice and slow. There again, going through these fast does nothing. Do three more. We can also do these and whoop, I just hit my object. One more. Here we go. Coming back. Wow. We can always also do these in a quadruped, quadruped format. Let's do the other side. Big toe through the ground. Squeeze the ground with that with your toe and heel. Ribs are down. Here we go. We're not getting into this opposite hip, meaning we're not doing this to gain access. So we're going to stand super tall. Shoulders are down. Nice elongation of the spine. Good control. And there again, what is the C in a car? Control. Let's 
This is a great one. If it's squats day, I don't care if you're doing just air squats or if you're doing heavy squats, your ability to work through this hip. Let's go super slow on this one. That's just for, for grins and giggles, super slow on my count. Here we go, raise the knee. One, two, it's gonna take 10 seconds to get to the other side. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 10 seconds coming back. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. As much work as we were doing here, you feel that other side. All right, let's get into some closed chain work now. I'm gonna adjust my mat. So, start with a mountain climb. Nice long lunge. Bring the hands down to each side of your foot. So, your right hand is inside your left foot. Excuse me, right hand is inside your right foot. I'll be okay. We're in a high plank. So, from the side, I'm pushing my face away. What I want you to do, I want you to scissor the legs together. So you're pulling this front foot back. You're trying to push the back foot towards the middle. We're gonna get really good activation on this right side through the hamstring. We're just holding here for right now. We're gonna get a great hip flexor stretch through this left side. Go back to high plank. Bring the left foot outside of your left hand. Let's do the same thing. Pushing the face away. We're not rounded. We're not, or not, we're not into our shoulders. We're pushing away. If you've done a lot of squats today in any of your workouts, this should feel wonderful. Back to high plank. I'm gonna get back to this side. Scissor the feet together. Closed chain mobility. We're gonna add a rotation on this here. Very shortly. Back to high plank, left foot up, scissor the legs. You feel you should feel that nice hamstring activation, even a little through the adductor, the groin. One more either side. Here we go. Another side. Good glute contraction there as well. Back to high plank, drop to your knees. And let's just child pose it real quick. A little demanding on the shoulders. A little rotation. All right. So now we're going to add rotation into this mountain climb. Same rules apply. High plank. Bring that right foot next to the um, right hand. From here, scissor the legs together, pulling here, pushing that back toe towards uh, the middle. From here, super steady. Grab the ground with your left hand, reach and rotate up. We're inhaling up, exhaling down. Other side. Scissor, inhale, exhale, to close. 
Scissor, inhale. Exhale, close. Inhale. Now be careful as you're coming here that we're not opening up, that we're not rotating and dipping into this hip. It's not what this is about. Hip stability, core stability. If you don't have those two or they are limited, it then limits what you're able to do in regards to overhead press, squats, we lose that ability. Two more either side to be able to stay nice and stable and steady in our lift motion. One more this side, inhale, rotate, and stop right here, don't move, exhale, inhale, drive with the shoulder, let's open up a little bit more, and exhale to close, same thing on this side, cycle of breath, inhale, exhale, inhale, drive through the shoulder, and rotate a little bit more, Exhale, and back to, whew, back to the ground. All right, now, we're gonna do shin box, and we're gonna do, we're gonna add a little extension and reach. So, this is our 90-90 position. Um, hopefully you're able to see that, to where this, I have my left leg in front of me, so this left knee is bent at 90 degrees. We have 90 degrees right here. This right leg is at 90 degrees as well. So I'm gonna move just a little bit. I'm gonna move here to be able to show you this fully. We're gonna get into a shin box and then we're gonna do some rotation uh, excuse me, a, a reach. With that reach, we're going to really open up the chest, the abs, and the anterior portion of our body. So, what we're going to do, um, we're going to work one side first, then we'll go to the other. We're going to do five reps on either side. So, from here, pushing down through your knee and your left ankle, we're going to come up. This is our shin box, glute tucked underneath us, our hips flexed, uh, our hip flexors are extended forward. I am on my left knee, left ankle. Take your left hand, put it behind you, and reach up. Big inhale. Exhale, back down. Control on the way down. Now, if you have difficulty in your hip structure, you can take a yoga block to be able to get put it underneath you. Take a yoga block, um, take a pillow. Uh, not advisable to use a cat or a small dog. They kind of wiggle too much. So from this point, stand up. I'm going to move my yoga block, left hand, inhale, really drive the hips forward, and exhale, tall chest, control, no plopping, control on the way down, three more, here we go, inhale up, exhale, to reach back, inhale, up, Exhale, close, standing tall, and back down. Two more. Inhale up. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, stand tall, and down. One more. Drive the hips up. Get them going. Here we go. Reach back and extend. 
reach up, really open that chest, and back down. Now, we're gonna rotate to this other side. I'm gonna move appropriately so I stay in frame. Ooh, right hip is super tight for me today. So here we go. This is a good time. I'm not feeling, I'm, I'm tight over here. This left side's really elevated, so I'm gonna even out things today. I'm gonna go right here. So, we're gonna inhale. Exhale, I can either use the block. Place the right hand behind you, reach up. Reach up to the ceiling. Exhale, stand tall. Come down, avoid the plop. Five total reps. Here we go. Inhale. Exhale, putting our hand down, reach up to the ceiling. Come back down. And drive the hips forward. Down. Extend. Wonderful opening of the chest and the shoulders, all that interior line. Two more. Exhale. I'm going to take the yoga block away. I'm going to challenge myself these la this last rep. Here we go. Driving through that right knee and right ankle. Reaching back, extending, and reaching up. And back down. All right. So let's get into two more poses here, and then we'll get into our um, meditation for today. Simple cat cows, wrist, elbow, shoulder, all stacked. If you see from the side, then the knee hip structure are in line. So I'm nice and stacked. We're going to work through the big toe. We're gonna push our hands away. We're not gonna be into our shoulders. So nice rounded back, almost giving yourself the double chin as you're pulling the face away. Starting with the low back, let's drop the hips. So the belly button, think about the bucket analogy. We're gonna stop this for a second. So remember, our bucket is right here. We have a full bucket. So this bucket, as we get here, when we go into anterior tilt, lower back extension, we're going to pour the water out of the bucket. And when we then tuck our hips underneath, we're going to refill that bucket. So using that analogy, we're now begin to tuck the hips. Chin gets to the chest, push up, protract the shoulders, nice rounding of the shoulders, begin with the hip, pour the water out of the bucket, and chin comes up. Inhale, hips, push to the back. Hips, and chin up. Hips, inhale. Tuck the hips underneath. Our goal over time, as we now lower back extension, pour the bucket of water out. Over time, with good spinal health, our spine flexes just like a wave, a smooth wave, not a chunky wave, not a pothole wave like we have in our streets right now. Tuck the 
Oops. Two more. Pour the bucket of water out. Belly goes to the ground. And one more time. Here we go. Tuck the hips underneath. All right. Last one. This is child's pose with an arm thread. So we're really going to work the shoulder area. And there's a cue right in here that we're going to try to, to ring the towel. And ringing the towel means that we're going to think about the connection, what's going to happen between our shoulder and our hip. And we're going to try to ring that towel, that wet towel, and try to get all the water out. So if you need to watch this real quick, we're going to get into child's pose. There again in our quadruped, we're going to push down. We're going to rotate open and then thread our right hand through. We're going to bring our shoulder to the ground. Now from this point, we're going to try to extend the shoulder out, this left hip away, that's ringing the towel. And then we're going to come back up to quadruped, back in the child's pose, other side. Quadruped, push the butt back into your heels, thread the arm underneath, trying to get that shoulder to the ground. If you're elevated, that's okay. We're still gonna try to get this rotation through that right hip, excuse me, the right shoulder and the left hip. Let's do two more either side. Pushing back into child's pose, thread the needle under. And twist the towel. The twisting of the towel is a little difficult, especially if we're not able to really have good control of our, our uh, contralateral line of our shoulder to our hip, and that's the left shoulder and right hip in this case. Last time, quadruped, push back into child's pose, thread the shoulder underneath, ring the towel, you're almost trying to open up your chest to the ceiling. One more time to the other side. Almost time for our meditation. I said meditation, not medication. So, uh, wonderful open chain at the beginning, closed chain, two varieties that you can do in your warm-ups um, and your cool-downs. So you just don't have to do them on Saturday mornings. Highly recommend it. There again, think of that race car analogy. You're not taking it from the hauler, slapping tires on it, and then going straight to the racetrack. Get your warm up in. Get the body ready to take on the work that you are doing today. So, find a comfortable position and let's get ready to uh, listen to our friends from Calm on our meditation for today. A 
about patience. Welcome to the Daily Calm. Today we'll be doing a body scan and discussing the quality of patience. Start by taking a comfortable position on a cushion or chair and hold your back nice and tall. Rest your hands gently in your lap. When you're ready, close your eyes. Feel the gentle pull of gravity as your body relaxes. Feel it sinking into the earth. And notice how it feels to relax in this way. Now take a few full, deep breaths. Letting each breath ease you into this moment. Deep breath in. Full breath out. And then return to natural breathing, rhythmic breathing. Anchoring your attention on the breath as it flows through you. With each inhale and exhale you take, let your body feel more and more at ease. Now shift your attention to your body, starting with the top of your head and scalp, feeling whatever's happening in this area. And lower your attention to your forehead, face, jaw, and chin. Soften the eyes and let the brow be smooth. Notice if the jaw feels clenched or relaxed. On your next out breath, lower your focus to the neck. Letting the throat and sides and back of the neck soften. Notice any sensation that arises on the surface of the skin or deeper within. Now bring your attention to your shoulders, letting them fall away from the neck. You might notice tension here, so if you do, breathe into your shoulders gently. If any parts feel tight, allow them to relax. And if they don't, gently accept that this is what's happening in the shoulders in this very moment. Bring your attention to your arms, noticing any sensations that are here, any coolness or heat, any tingling or pressure. And the next out breath, allow them to soften.
Extend your awareness down the arms towards the wrists, palms, and fingers. There might even be a sense of feeling the hands from the inside out. Direct your attention to your back and notice what's here. Not judging any of the sensations you feel. We're not labeling them as good or bad. We're not making up any stories about them. All we're doing is noticing and opening up to what's here. Now come to the chest, observing the rise and fall of each breath. Notice how the lungs expand and contract and observe how this feels. Moving your focus around to your abdomen Letting this next breath be received in a softening belly. Now bringing your attention to your pelvis, hips, and glutes. Hold whatever is happening in awareness, observing sensation exactly as it is. Now scan your legs, observing your thighs. Notice where they make contact with your cushion or chair. Breathe in and let go, sinking deeper. Lowering your attention to your knees, your shins, your ankles, feet, and toes. Observe if there's an itching or tingling or pressure. Simply observe what's there. Let your legs and feet soften and tensions release. Now just spend a moment relaxing your attention, noticing how you feel. So what are we doing as we sit here, observing sensations through the body as they arise? We're learning to observe our present moment experience as it is, without judging it or reacting to it. We're learning to recognize that the sensations we experience in our bodies have an impact on our mind. And similarly, the thoughts that cross our mind have a direct impact on our bodies, manifesting as physical sensation. We're learning to come back when we're distracted and to stay when it's difficult. Meditation is an experiential practice where the mind and body is relearning and rewiring. So while we may not see results overnight, restructuring is happening. Hold patience and let go of any expectations for results to be immediate. That patience that you're cultivating as you sit will grow as a quality that you can tap into anytime. Patience for yourself, your practice, and patience in daily life. As John Kabat-Zinn said, patience is a form of wisdom. 
It demonstrates that we understand the fact that sometimes things must unfold in their own time. So trust in that unfolding. And as we come to the end of the session, bring your attention back to the room. Wiggle your fingers and toes. And whenever you're ready, open your eyes. I hope you enjoyed today's Daily Calm. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Thank you, athletes. Have a wonderful uh, Saturday. Um, I think all the snow is behind us. Let's uh, set so sail on a, on a great day today, great weekend. Let's uh, put patience into our lives. Fingers crossed, uh, May 1st we'll be uh, able to, to reopen. Uh, you know, if that gets pushed another two weeks, which very well could be the case, we don't know, then, you know, we'll, uh, we'll make do. We're resilient. Uh, we, we make do with everything that we're able to uh, everything that comes to us, we're able to really make do. So uh, stay vigilant, stay patient, uh, stay loving. Um, it's going to be a great day on behalf of uh, Coach Autumn and myself. Uh, we bid you peace, and we look forward to seeing you next Saturday right here. I'll see you. Know your impact. You have to go ahead and send some over here. See how that is. <laughs> See? See? Ah. Uh. <laughs>